uh, open up your Bibles to Numbers chapter 33. So this part of the teaching might take a while, so I have to try to make, it, make this part as brief as I can. So some of you have heard the popular news media concerning the Roseanne show. I don't, <laughs> Roseanne Barr, she didn't make a smart move, but she basically said some racial jokes concerning <laughs> Obama's aide and uh, Valerie Jarrett. She referred to an ape and a Muslim joke connected with Valerie Jarrett <laughs> with Obama's aide. So that thing alone got her fired immediately. Now the thing is this, is that you got to understand this. This should not be a surprise. And if you're an honest liberal, if you're an honest liberal, you'll even agree with this. Hollywood is completely biased. So, okay, I understand firing her for a racial joke like that. I get it. But one, that is, uh, that is completely biased because if you go through so many other comedians, they said so many racial jokes as well. But they didn't fire them. So why? Why fire her? Because she's connected with right-wingers. That's the thing. Connected with right-wingers, Trump, etc. So just because of that, then they will completely disbar you. They would just completely cut you off. So the Roseanne Show, it was rebooted to record-breaking Nielsen ratings, and that's found at the article, Roseanne Comes Roaring Back with 18 Million Viewers, title of the article. And that's by CNN as well, CNN, March 28, 2018, by Frank Palota. So this is by a liberal news media. They recognize that. So how can such a woman who's getting this popularization, I mean, you're going to get a lot of money for that in your TV show. Why just cut her off just for something like that? Because they're so biased. They're liberal-minded. Anything that has to do with Christians, with Israel, with right-wingers, etc., that is considered what? Oh, that is excommunication by the Catholic Church, they'll say. Now, the thing is this, is that Roseanne, she even wanted to make a public apology. Now, if I was that uh, news, if I was the station, I would let her post her public apology, showing to everybody that stuff like this should not be said. But they wouldn't even give her that chance. Why? Because they want to make Christians, they want to make right-wingers look evil. Now, Roseanne, I'm not saying she's a safe Christian, but she does have some kind of Christian belief, so to speak. She says that during this situation she's going through, she takes it as God works all things together for good. A trial for a blessing that I should be focusing more time on the poor people, she said. So this is found in this article by Julius Young. The title of the article is Roseanne Barr appears dis disheveled in first sighting since racist tweet and show cancellation. So this is at June 1st, 2018, fresh. So it says right here, Roseanne, certainly, Roseanne Barr certainly hasn't had the best week. The shame comedian said she begged Sherwood at ABC2, let me apologize and make amends before her sitcom was axed. Not only that, Barr tweeted this, attempting to also get phone numbers for Jarrett, Michelle, and GS to personally apologize to them, though I disagree with their politics. I was still wrong to dehumanize them. They are not my enemy. Harboring hate and anger is my enemy. I can speak respectfully to those with whom I disagree. But no. Why not make it public, televised? Why not? Yeah, because you want to demonize people who lean toward what? Christian, right-wing, conservative type of beliefs. Now, again, we don't, we're not in full agreement with the Republicans. They have some problems too. But the thing is this, is that we do believe in a lot of conservative right-wing ideals, albeit not all of them. And some of those principles are biblical. So the thing is, the point is the liberal news media, they'll go anything that leans toward Christian, even if it's not Christian. See, that's the point. That's the point of television. That's the point of Hollywood. And that's what's going to happen at the tribulation. Their job is to 
Okay, so this is not just this. You got to realize this. It's anything that leans toward Christian. So this itself is not Christian, but it is leaning toward this. So if you're either in this or leaning toward Christian, the point is this. They're going to demonize you. They're not going to give you a chance to make you look innocent. Pictures are always deceiving. Once they post that publicly in picture of her apology, see that it makes us look, uh, it doesn't make them look demonized. So make it demonized by not giving them a chance. Now, I don't know if they're going to give her a chance. Maybe they will. I don't know, but so far they didn't. And not only that, they are definitely biased. There's no doubt they're biased to show the weak points of Christians and anyone leaning toward Christian ideology, and their goal is to demonize them, make them look bad. And not only that, their job is to ignore the errors of liberals, public errors of the liberals, and make them look good. Because you got several examples right here. Like a good one is Bill Maher. Bill Maher, you got to realize, he actually said a really bad N-word. And I mean in the context of like slavery, like that bad. But you know what they did? All they did, he's still on there. He's still on the show. And the article is found is, What was Bill Maher's Big Mistake? Title of article by Wesley Morris, The New York Times, June 4th, 2017. Why didn't they cancel him out? Why didn't they get rid of him? Not only that, it's not just that N-word that was controversial. If you listen to him, he said a lot of controversial things. For example, this in this article, it reads, he has compared his dog to, de uh, to developmentally disabled children. He has questioned vaccines and claimed that Islam has too much in common with ISIS. After the September 11 attacks, he wondered on his old late night ABC program, politically incorrect about the nature of bravery, comparing the terrorist suicide mission to American missiles, which he saw as hands off cowardly approach. Now look at this. He said a lot of things about Muslims and other people, minorities as well. They keep him on. This is like really controversial. Not only that, you got Jimmy Kimmel who uh, made a racial joke concerning Melania Trump's accent. He says right here, not a chance she did one thing to help set that up. There's no, she didn't. Die eggs, she didn't fill basket. The only thing she's been working on is an escape tunnel. And then he slammed on her accent by the way she, she pronounced things. This and that, that's the end. So you see right, this article is found at the Sean Hannity show, A New Low, Jimmy Kimmel viciously mocks Melania Trump's accent. Not only that, there was a homophobic joke concerning Trump with his mouth with Vladimir Putin. And I kid you not, it's so disgusting. That was by Stephen Colbert. And that's found at the article, uh, No FCC Fine for Stephen Colbert's Late Night Donald Trump C blank blank holster crack. That's the end of the title of the article by Lisa de Moraes, May 23rd, 2017. But this, this is just, uh, I can go on and on and on. See, that's the goal of television, and that has to happen for tribulation. Go to Numbers 33, verse 52. Modern Bibles will change this, and I think almost all modern Bibles, so I want you to check this up. God condemns pictures, you got to understand. Verse 52, then shall you drive out all the inhabitants of the land from before you and destroy all their what? Pictures. pictures and destroy all their molten images. Modern Bibles get rid of the word pictures and replace that with carving images or something. No, the Lord specifically condemns something. It's pictures. You know why? Because pictures is what the devil uses to deceive people. The evidence is you. You might say, why? Because you, you believe everything that you watch on television and even on the internet. See, unless it's a picture, then you believe. That's what God condemns, you gotta understand, is pictures. Now, look how this plays off in the tribulation. It's connected with images. That's interesting. Pictures are connected with images. 
Look at Revelation 13. Revelation 13. What are Hollywood called? Hollywood actors in those pictures. They're called idols. They're called idols. Isn't it coincidence how God connects the two together? Now look at Revelation chapter 13 and verse 3. The Antichrist, he has the whole world in wondering. How can the whole world see the Antichrist and wonder after him? You see it on a screen. Not only that, they will love his image, the Bible says. Look at Revelation chapter 13 and verse 3. And I saw one of his heads as it were wounded to death, and his deadly wound was heal, healed. And all the world wondered after the beast. How can the whole world wonder and see his deadly wound healed? It's television. Not only that, they seek after his image. Look at verse 15. And he had power to give life unto who? The image of the beast, that the image of the beast should both speak and cause that as many as would not worship who? The image of the beast should be killed. You know what you live in a day and age of the world worshiping whatever those images say. That's what you're doing. You're all bowing down. Conservatives and liberals bowing down to the image saying, oh yeah, what he or she said must be true. Oh, because of the images in that move, movie move my heart, I'm going to believe what that movie is telling me when it gives some kind of Hollywood liberal satanic agenda lesson in that movie. That'll preach. Go to Revelation 11. Revelation chapter 11. Not only that, so here's the thing, not only in the Bible, Hollywood's goal, now you heard me mention this, so I will write it down. Their goal is to make what? Evil look good. And their goal is to make what? God good look evil. God is good. Good is close with God. So there, anything that relates to Christianity, the Bible, look evil. You want evidence of that? This is the most satanic thing you can do. Look at Revelation 11. Rejoicing at dead bodies of God's saints. That is the most wicked thing you can end up in. Look at Revelation chapter 11, verse 8. And their dead bodies, those are the two witnesses that God sends, shall lie in the street of that great city, which spiritually is called what? Sodom and Egypt, so where, our, where also our Lord was crucified. And they of the people and kindreds and tongues and nations shall see their dead bodies three days and a half and shall not suffer their dead bodies to be put in graves. How can everyone around the world see the dead bodies of these two witnesses? Technology. That's right, technology. Pictures, what you look at a screen. And what Hollywood and television does is to deliberately show you people pictures that they look evil, that they would even rejoice that they died. What in the, this is Hollywood. This is wickedness. Now look at Isaiah 2. That's why, you know what God's going to do? This is God's judgment on Hollywood. Look at Isaiah chapter 2. Isaiah chapter 2. You know what he's going to do? It's not just Hollywood. It's anything that has to do with pictures that glorifies the devil's agenda. Look at Isaiah chapter 2. Isaiah chapter 2 and verse 11. So the Lord will wipe them out. Verse 11, the lofty looks of man shall be humbled, and the haughtiness of men shall be bowed down. That's right, you dumb idols, you, and I mean Hollywood idols, you dumb speakers over there, you news media propaganda people out there, so much filled with pride, because the public adores you and you can't look wrong or you'll ruin your image in front of the eyes of the people. God's going to do what? And the Lord alone shall be exalted in that day. But it's not going to be them, it's going to be God. For the day of the Lord of hosts shall be upon everyone that is proud and lofty. That includes Hollywood images and idols. And upon everyone that is lifted up and he shall be brought low. So what's he going to do with all these people? So they're all brought up. Television pictures made them look good. And upon all the cedars of Lebanon that are high and lifted up, and upon all the oaks of Bashan, so God judges these nations. And upon all the high mountains, he judges them. And upon all the hills that are lifted up, he judges them. 
and upon every high tower, and upon every fenced wall, he judges them. And upon all the ships of Tarshish, he judges them. And upon all what? Pleasant pictures. He judges them too. So you know what the Lord is going to do? He's going to judge all of them. He's going to judge all of them, wipe them all out, because they put this blasphemous picture after picture. I get so angry at Hollywood. There's one thing that I'm mad at. The number one thing I'm mad at is education. The second thing I'm mad at is Hollywood. These guys just deliberately post picture after picture, winning people's hearts to make evil look good and good look evil. I will rejoice in that day when God burns Hollywood to the ground. Amen. I'm going to rejoice in that. Now, do I rejoice in people, in souls burning? No. I don't. I want them to get saved from hell. I want them to get saved by the blood of Jesus Christ. Amen. But I, what I want to burn is that wicked system, that wicked picture system. It makes me so disgusted. It makes me so angry. And I can't wait for the day. By the way, not look, look what's in the context of pictures. Verse 18, and the what? Idols he shall utterly abolish. There won't be any Hollywood idol right there who will deceive the hearts of the simple anymore. 